Good morning and welcome. As we have flipped the calendar to the month of October, I know one that many of us look forward to for a lot of reasons. A few announcements to get us started. The flowers this morning are given in loving memory of Bill Chestnut from Linda and their children, Ferris, Ian, and Lindsay. As you'll note in your bulletin, it's a busy day today at Keith. Uh, there's a wedding shower for Danny and Amberly between services day and uh, we were just informed that has been moved to the gathering rather than Insminger Hall. A meeting of the gathering worship team will follow the contemporary service at noon. At 4 o'clock today, there will be the blessing of the animals outside the gathering. Then in response to our Sound of Freedom, Sound of Freedom screening, we will hold a seminar on human trafficking at 6 p.m. in the gathering this evening. So certainly a lot going on. All adults are welcome to join as we study the Gospel of Luke on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. in Insminger Hall. Come learn why it's called the loveliest book in the world. Let's now pair our hearts and minds for worship as we enjoy today's prelude and the light is brought into the sanctuary.
This morning's call to worship is printed in your bulletin. Please join me. I will read both the leader and the congregational parts for those listening at home. Almighty God, from the ends of the earth, you have gathered us around Christ's holy table. We come to feast together. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. Renew us and make us one. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross, found on page 159 in your hymnal. of presenting Bibles to our third graders. So I've asked Reagan to come this morning, and I'm going to invite Caroline Schreck and Mason Rucker, two of our third graders this morning, to the front. Uh, I bet you can't guess what we have for you this morning <laughs> in, these wrapped in these wrapped packages. I know you're eager to come and unwrap these. So... Um, Take your time. No, you only only have three seconds to unwrap those. <laughs> Y'all can do it. On your mark, get set, go. You can do it. Okay. Sorry. No, you're Reagan fine. has a plan. Your Bibles are wrapped in brown paper to remind you that this is a very old book. It is 30 centuries old. Some parts of this book were composed more than a thousand years before Christ. 
Some of those stories come down to us from a time before people could even write. This is an ancient, sacred book of our faith. Handle it carefully. So handle it very carefully as you unwrap them quickly. Aren't they doing a great job? <laughs> Need some help, please? Rip the paper, not rip the Bible. They're down one, one uh, level here. Your Bible is now wrapped in gold foil. This is to remind you that the Bible is very valuable, more valuable than gold. People have been imprisoned because they read this book. Some have died to save this book from being destroyed. Our Bible, sacred scripture, is both ancient and valuable. Raiden has done a wonderful job in, uh, yeah, just take your finger and get underneath there. You can do it. There you go, Carolyn. Oh, there you go. She's got another layer. What do you think, bud? <laughs> Your Bible is filled with wonderful stories. You've heard them in Sunday school, but now you can read them for yourselves. There are adventure stories and miracle stories, stories of heroes and stories of villains. Some of the stories are happy and some of them are sad. As you read them, look beyond the stories, look for the lessons they teach. Try to understand how these lessons can be used in your own life. Noah teaches us the lesson of trusting in God. You can use that to seek answers that await you in these stories. Your Bible is not only ancient and valuable, but also entertaining and fun. All right, let's see what we got, guys. Do we dare take off one more level? We're getting close. Face got too late. The white color is to remind us that the scripture is inspired. It came from a people who have a special understanding of God. It is not like any other book you will ever own. When you read it, you will understand what God is like and what God wants you to do. You have a message from God wrapped in this ancient, valuable, entertaining, inspired scripture.
Receive the word of God, learn its stories, and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another. For we are the people of God. Can we give these guys a hand? In just a minute, you all will uh, hear from them. They are going to be reading our scripture out of their new Bible. It'll be very exciting. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to take your hymnals. I'm going to ask you all to do the reading as Jordan leads us in our affirmation of faith. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you haven't uh, noticed in today's bulletin, today is World Communion Sunday. And uh, as Caroline and Mason come and read a very familiar uh, gospel story for us, I pray that uh, as familiar as it is to us, that we would have new ears and new hearts to receive this story for us today. When Jesus heard what happened to John, Jesus left in a boat. He went to a lonely place by himself. But when the crowds heard about it, they followed him on foot from the town. When Jesus arrived, he saw a large crowd. He felt sorry for them and healed those who were sick. Late that afternoon, his followers came to Jesus and said, No one lives in this place, and it is already late. Send the people away so they can go to the town and buy food for themselves. Jesus answered, They don't need to go away. You give them some food to eat. The followers answered, but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said, bring the bread and the fish to me. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of of bread and the two fish. Then he looked to heaven and thanked God for the food. Jesus divided the loaves of bread, gave them to his followers, and they gave the bread to the people. All the people ate and were satisfied. After they finished eating, the followers had filled 12 baskets with the pieces of food that 5,000 men were there who ate, as well as women and Paulus answered, But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said, Bring the bread and the fish to me. Then he told the people to sit down on the ground. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. Then he looked to heaven and thanked God for the food. Jesus divided the loaves of bread. He gave them to his followers, and 
the gift of virtue. All the people ate and were satisfied. After they finished eating, the followers filled baskets with the pieces of food that were not eaten. There were about 5,000 men who ate, as well as women and children. Princess is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we come together this morning and uh, we share our uh, concerns and our joys, are there concerns that we can bring before each other and uh, pray together this morning? Any concerns? Well, we do ask that you would uh, continue to remember Marilyn Rowden. Uh, she uh, had surgery earlier this week at UT Hospital uh, for some uh, broken vertebrae in her neck and uh, is expected to come back to Athens Place this week. And uh, if you would remember Marilyn. Are there other concerns that we can mention this morning? Right, the family of uh, Melissa Reuter, we would uh, be praying for that family. Other concerns? Pat. Doug and Margie Jones. Uh, Doug will continue uh, some chemo this week and uh, keep him in our prayers this week. Are there other concerns? Are there joys that we can share together this morning? Nancy. Patty Moe's in the house. <laughs> Patty, it's good to have you back with us this morning. Yeah, it's good to have you back with us, Patty. Everybody feel the, the breeze in the air this morning? It's feeling like fall. Our air conditioning is working in church this morning. And uh, feeling the, the breeze outside, feeling like fall. and is expected to feel like fall next weekend. So uh, we are, are grateful for the season changes. Uh, other joys that we can celebrate this morning? Yeah, <laughs> Ethan, Ethan is, is still sleeping soundly back there, <laughs> not really, <laughs> but it's still soundly, <laughs> yeah, still soundless, all right, Mike. all right, oh. Margaret, which day is that? Of course, Wednesday. On Wednesday is Margaret Hubble's birthday, all right. 29 again, we're, we're thinking, <laughs> all right, excellent. Any other birthdays or anniversaries this week? We usually go through that. Y'all are quiet this morning. <laughs> You're worn out from a late game. Everybody's, everybody's just trying to wake up. Any other joys that we can share together? All right, on this World Communion Sunday, uh, would you join me in this prayer for our church? Oh God, as we gather on World Communion Sunday, 
May we be reminded of your unconditional grace, your love and provision gifted to us through, through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, we are reminded that you alone unite the body of Christ together under one church, under the Lordship of your Son, Jesus. Forgive us, O oh God, when we stray away from that truth. Forgive us, God, for actions that, that may lead to division rather than unity. And help us, God, to live a purpose-driven life that aligns with your heart for all people and guided by your word of truth. Thank you for welcoming us to commune with you on our bad days and our good days. Not because of anything that we have done to deserve it, but because of Jesus' sacrifice that gives us life. God, we pray that as a church that you would forgive us of our individual sin, of our corporate sin, that you forgive and renew. That you would allow us to look to your face. To look to your strength for our life. God, restore us to new life, we pray in the name of Christ. And God, as you taught your early disciples to pray, May this prayer ring true in our hearts today as we join together in the Lord's Prayer by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Could we continue to worship this morning in the giving of our tithes and our offerings, knowing that this is an act of worship that we give back to God?
God and may these gifts continue to expand your kingdom in this world. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Many of you all follow the Marvel heroes, the amazing superpowers that they have. They're always responding to a problem with their superpowers and, and able to respond in incredible ways. I mean, first you have Spider-Man who has the, the coolest outfit ever, right? He's able to climb walls and throw spider webs and has super strength and power and the cool suit. Then you have Captain, Captain America who has the super shield and he has super power and speed. And then you have the Hulk. He has the super duper strength. If you think about these Marvel heroes, they have these, these extra cool things that that make them super strong. Wouldn't it be cool if you and I could have the same abilities? To have those super strengths and, and to have super speeds to solve all our problems with supernatural strength? Matthew chapter 14 that, that uh, Caroline and Mason read for us tells us about Jesus coming upon a, a crowd of people. And, and this is the story of feeding the 5,000. And, and these 5,000 people probably thought Jesus was a superhero. They probably thought he had super strength and, and could do amazing things. The writers of the Bible thought that this story is so important that they included it in all four Gospels. This is the only story that is included in all four of the Gospels. In Matthew's take, there's this enormous uh, crowd that had followed Jesus. He had tried to get away from the crowd to, to get a little rest, but, but they followed him because they, they wanted something from Jesus. And and, then, and, and as Jesus began to, to teach them and began to speak to them, it came a little later in the day, and, and Jesus turned to his disciples and basically said, listen, these people are getting hungry. Why don't you give them something to eat? And the problem became this, that there were so many people and so little food. And the problem is, how are we going to feed them? Philip, one of the disciples who was the practical one, said, listen, Jesus, we could work for six months, and we could only give everyone a little piece of bread. How in the world are we going to feed them? Andrew, being the the helpful one also went throughout the crowd and, and found a little boy that had two small fish and five barley loaves and said, Jesus, this is the only food that we found in the house. See, there's a big problem. And there's a small answer. Andrew's found a, a little boy got just a, a little bit to give. But with that little bit, Jesus is willing to show his power. Jesus takes that small fish and those five barley loaves and, and he gives thanks to God. He asks his disciples to begin passing out the food to the people that are seated in groups. And you know what happens. There's so much food that they had 12 
baskets of food left over. Take that all in. It would be like feeding all of Nalen Stadium and having all that food left over. They, everybody ate until they were all satisfied and they still had extra food. You see, sitting there and seeing this miracle, the people were amazed by his power. They were amazed by, by this miracle. They may not have understood how it happened or why Jesus did it, but they sure were glad that Jesus did because they once were hungry, but now they're fed. If you read on a little bit in, in Matthew's Gospel, they want to make Jesus king. And who wouldn't? Because Jesus has just filled the belly. For free. He's just done this miracle that has been amazing right there in front of their eyes. And they're like, let's make him king. He can do this all the time. Jesus avoided the crowd's demand to make him king. He slipped away by himself. Jesus was not willing to take the honor and the glory for what he had done. It's not what it was about. Let's think about this miracle for a minute. See, there's a big problem with a small answer. But Jesus wasn't overwhelmed by it. He didn't quit. He didn't get frustrated when things got hard, he reached out to other people to try and, and find a solution. The disciples were still trying to learn the ways of Jesus. They were still trying to, to learn that they could do very little on their own. They were still trying to find practical ways of, of doing things. They needed Jesus to come and, and do something miraculous. The boy, he was willing to give up his lunch for the greater good. The little boy gave all that he had to Jesus. And it ended up being more than enough. It get, gives me the thought that every offering that we have to give to God, regardless of how small it seems, is more than enough in the hands of God. It's more than enough. Because God can take that and multiply it and, and do great things with it. You see, you look at those 5,000 people the crowd was big. The resources were small. But Jesus was bigger. Jesus was enough. I was thinking about World Communion Sunday earlier this week. And I've been thinking about in, in previous lifetimes, in, in my lifetime, I've traveled to different countries to Sudan to India to Nicaragua and I've and I've met people that um, that didn't have enough resources. I've been to churches that are that would pale in comparison to this. I've talked to Christians that that had very little resources but had so much joy. And I thought about the things that, that we have here in the United States, here in Athens. And you know that we've got it pretty good. Do you realize that? We've got it pretty good. We've got electricity. Just flip up a switch, and there it is. We've got, for the most part, 
adequate food. We've got a roof over our head. We've got a car that, that allows us to go wherever we want. There's been a, a lot of situations that I've seen that that hadn't been the truth. And if you think about the problems that we encounter around the world, our world still has problems, does it not? I mean, outside of our, our community, outside of our state, outside of the United States, I mean, there's still an invasion of Ukraine that's going on. There's earthquakes in Syria and Morocco that have recently happened. There's food insecurity in so many areas of our world. There's a lack of, of clean water. There's death that we can't hardly imagine around our world. my first response is that I would like to have some of those Marvel superpowers. I would like to have those, those powers to where I could go to these areas and fix them. I would like to go and, and provide water and food enough to feed the world. But I know that that's not realistic. My encouragement is not to get overwhelmed by the problems in our world. Not to get frustrated by the limitations that, that we have. But understand that our little prayers, what we consider our little prayers, will make a difference. For our world, our, our big problems, our our resources are small. The problems are real and our resources are small, but, but Jesus is enough. Maybe you've got a big problem. And maybe it seems that, that you've got very little. Little hope. Little trust. Little patience. Little faith. Take that little that you have, and that will be enough for Jesus to take and to multiply into abundance. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, I'm going to ask that you take the great Thanksgiving that's included in your bulletin. We will share in this holy time together. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join your name and join their unending, unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. You commissioned us to be His witnesses to the end of the earth, and to make disciples of all nations. And today's family and all the world is joining at His holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite those who are assisting in the serving to come forward at this time. May we come this morning to God's table.
Friends, I'm going to ask that you stand as you're able and join in our last hymn, number 367, He Touched Me. that as we go from this place that you would take the reminder of the joy and love that we have experienced this morning and take it to the world as we leave. Go this place, go from this place with joy and peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen.